for three. Under five to go here in Lake Buena Vista. The Old Spice Classic. John Chambi, Fran Priscilla, Andy Katz with you. See, Hayes and Vasquez, they're, they're not a point, they're not two, they're guards. They both can play with the ball. That was way off by Hayes. Gray the board, and here come the Zags. In and out for Pargo. Right now, the Zags living and dying with the jump shot. And they really don't have a, well, they've got Heitfeld in there where they can play through, but Josh Heitfeld, not really your prototypical low post scorer. Vasquez pulls up and balance and downs the rebound. See, Maryland doesn't have to doesn't have a place to go inside. Gonzaga does, but they're not taking advantage of it. Heitfeld did not see Vasquez step in. And now Hayes, ball fake and two is short. And a timeout called by Mark Few. 331 to go first half. As Gonzaga leads this one by three. What's your impressions of what you've seen so far, well, Coach? I, I think I think the thing Mark Few is saying right now is look, we don't mind playing free and loose offensively, but if you if we miss four or five jump shots in a row, let's go inside and let's get an easy basket or get ourselves to the foul line. Folks, Sunday night, two of the top women's basketball teams in the country hit the court on ESPN. Oklahoma goes up against UConn, Courtney Paris, and Maya Moore. Women's college basketball part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's ESPN Sunday night, 8.15 Eastern. Mark Few named the Zags head coach after the run to the final eight in 1999, and that meant that Dan Munson would take over at Minnesota. Mark Few is coaching his 300th game today for the Zags, one of the winningest coaches in college basketball. I mentioned yesterday what a great job he does with coaches versus cancer. He and his wife Marcy have raised over three million dollars for the cause and ironically Gary Williams is the president this year of coaches versus cancer. Little sideline pressure by Maryland. They're one of the few teams in the country that will press on the sideline. They almost come up with a steal. Let's see what the Zags do with numbers. And a bump on the baseline. 30 27, Gonzaga, 324 to go, first half. All right, Ryan, thanks very much. And Purdue, a good looking team, a young team, but a group with experience. Well, Etwan Moore, Robbie Hummel, we watched them last year play against Clemson in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. The thing that would impress me was how much command of his team Matt Painter has. He has got a great coach's voice for practice. When he talks, everybody listens, and he is one of the bright young coaches in college basketball. That team plays with a lot of energy. That Matt Painter, Bruce Weber, Chris Lowry yes. group. You know, when you watch guys coach, go to practice, I, I can, all I need is 10 minutes of in any part of a coach's practice, and I can tell what they believe in. And when you watch Purdue practice, you can, you know they believe in toughness, defense, and taking care of the basketball. I think one of the things that's fun as well is to watch how the kids react to the coach. And the point on Matt Painter is a good one. Watching that team practice, the kids are locked in on him. There is no, hey, listen, hey, pay attention. They're listening. That's right. Vasquez on the baseline, aggressive to the rim, and he's fouled. Take it. It's interesting, John, I didn't mean to interrupt, but they've got now 22 points in the paint, Maryland, with a chance to get a couple more. And they don't have a low post presence that you throw it into. So how do they get points in the paint? They have used the dribble today to get inside of that Zags defense. And again, something that Mark Few will address throughout the course of the year. Day back in, Brown sits with his second foul. Bravis Vasquez with 10 points. He was an Iron Man last year, averaged about 37 minutes a game. So he did not get a lot of rest. 
There's a little 55 press, the 1 2 1 1. It's a one trap and done press, but you have to convert and transition. Look at Day, the body control, and the big fella sinks that floater. Now, the problem when you press full court is you spread the court out. And when you have as many offensive weapons as Gonzaga has, once you get past the first line, you're giving guys like Day the opportunity to make athletic plays. And there's a block, it'll stay Maryland basketball. Now watch how they get through this press. Here's Austin Day. They get the ball in bounds. They've already broken the press. So now there's an open court situation, and that allows Day to use that athletic ability to get to the rim. Vasquez trying to leave it for Milbourne turnover, and it'll go over to Gonzaga. If you look in the dictionary under the word mercurial, you'll see Grievous Vasquez because he can be hot, he can be cold, he gets frustrated with his teammates, but he's a winner. And so you live with some of the mistakes, the four turnovers a game that he averages. Closing it on two minutes to go, first half, a good one here at the Milk House. Winner gets Tennessee on Sunday. Nice move, Pargo with the left hand. One of the things you like to watch when you watch guys that can play, especially guys that can get to the rim, is can they use both hands? And that was a perfect example right there by Jeremy Pargo. A little miscommunication there as Mosley was going one way, the pass went the other, a turnover, and that is number nine. Uh, Gary Williams team. Well, Zaga did a good job right here on the perimeter of switching all the ball screens. And you see now Day out there guarding Hayes and just a sloppy play. Now credit Gonzaga John because Maryland's only got one three point shot tonight made and they made nine last night. Mike it down having himself a a good first half, a little bit of everything from him. Now, when you think about Gonzaga, you can say that about uh, uh, Pargo, Downs, Bolden, a little bit of a day, a little bit of everything. These guys are a versatile offensive team. I think outside of North Carolina, this is the best offensive team in the country in terms of weapons. Yeah, just so many different guys can get you. That's a strong statement. Well, you know what? It's got to be done on the defensive end for them to be a team that's going to be thought of as a legitimate contender to win the whole thing. I don't think they're there on the defensive end yet. But offensively, they know how to play basketball. Dallas wisely slowed it down. And now Bolden with Mosley on him. Step in, Milborn the steal. And he'll go at Day. Tries to block it. Can't put a tip. Won't go, Day the rebound. Heitfeldt was down low looking for a lob. Golden trying to use the screen, now Pargo. Neal gets a piece, deflects to Vasquez. Good defense there. That ball was in the air too long. Milbourne has it blocked by Day. Cargo. Kick out. Hanging in the air and Day hits. How about that versatility? You got four guys on the floor right now for Gonzaga that can knock down the three and also put the ball on the floor. And by the way, lead of the game for the Zag. Austin Day, a very underrated shot blocker as well. Little zone now by the Zags. This will take away dribble penetration. Neal jump hook, no good. Bolden at the buzzer. What a counted. Jeremy Pargo and Gravis Vasquez going back and forth, but Gonzaga 38-29, they lead at the break.